Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. And today we're taking a look at a really, really weird knife. This is the Camillus Wedge. And the making of this video, oh gosh, this video has taken me over a year to make. So I bought this knife way back in, oh gosh, October of 2022. And just as a fun, I just thought it was funny. I was going to make a video making fun of how much jimping there was over here on the top. I was going to be like, oh, you know, this is the jimpingest knife that ever jimped. You know, finally a knife that has enough jimping for me. Har, har, har. But I gave it to my dad. Um, actually, I guess I just kind of gave it to the whole family to use as a wood splitter uh, for the wood stove there at the, at the family place. And since I don't have a wood stove at my house, I figured, you know, they could use this. And I took some footage when I gave it to them over Christmas, that was in a, what did I give it to them? I think it was Thanksgiving. Uh, I gave it to them Thanksgiving of 2022. Took some footage there of them using it. Uh, and then I just kind of forgot about this knife. Um, and then I saw some other people on YouTube making videos about this. And I was like, oh, I had that knife a long time ago. So I should, I should do something about that. And so now I'm finally making the video. Um, I've been here, you know, visiting the folks for you know, Christmas and stuff, and they've been making some fires with this since I decided it's time to review this thing. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this review started uh, with a blade length measurement. So sharpened edge is four inches pretty much on the dot. If we measure all the way back to the scale, we're coming in about four and a half inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Um, we're not going to do a whole lot of folding knives because I don't think that's really needed. Uh, but here's our rat one, and here's our rat two. There we go. As far as fixed blades go, it's pretty mid-size. Um, I guess just for shits and giggles. Here it is against the Benchmade Bugout. Here it is against the Spyderco PM2. And I guess since we've come this far, we might as well compare it against all the usual suspects because um, I'm a completionist. And where did I put my other size comparison knives? There they are. I always lose some size comparison knife. There's the Civivi Praxis. And here's the Civivi Elementum, or in this case, the Elementum 2. Alrighty, and let's compare against some fixed blades. So the first one we're going to compare against, because I compare every fixed blade against this, is the Cold Seal SRK, the greatest fixed blade of all time. And let's compare it against this Camillus knife fixed blade I have lying around whose name I don't remember. But go to your local Walmart and I guarantee you'll find one on a shelf in the sporting goods section. There we go. I am going to be doing a video with this knife. I bought it and a bunch of other um, fixed blades for a video I was working on. But I have not had the opportunity to get to the testing or filming of that video yet. And the last knife I'll compare against just because I think this is going to be kind of a funny comparison. Here's the CRKT Razel. There's some resemblance here, uh, but these are two very different knives built for very different purposes. Alrighty, so materials. <laughs> what are we working with here? 420 bl uh, blade on the 420 steel on the blade, which is kind of what Camillus typically uses. And then we have a plastic handle and the sheath is also plastic. So there we go. Let's go ahead and go to the cutting footage slash wood splitting footage that I recorded with this knife a long, long time ago and some more recent stuff. Let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, I definitely think it could have benefited from like three or four extra inches yeah. on the end. It wouldn't have made it that much more bulky, really. No. Sure. 
Yeah, probably not a hatchet replacement. No, but in a tank. Yeah. For stuff like this, especially. No kindling maker. <laughs> well, the knife chisel is pretty cool for keeping by your stove for when you need to make kindling for your fire. And, uh, that all it used for. Get out of that naughty sucker. Evo Growler. I'm gonna make some feather sticks. Why? Because I'm a knife nut. Alrighty guys, we're back with another review cutting and I have my brother with me here again because we're doing the review cutting for another knife that I have had little to no experience with, but he's had lots of experience with. So, we're talking the Camillus Wedge. Now, I bought this knife more than a year ago and I gave it to my brothers and my dad for building fires there at the house. How many fires do you think you've built with this knife? Oh boy, um, what's your, like? Between last winter and this winter, probably upwards of 70. Yeah, so lots and lots of fires. They keep this inside by the wood stove so they can split wood before putting it in the stove instead of having a, an axe or something in there. Which, how do you think that works out? Oh, it works really good. It works really well. I took some footage last winter of you and dad, I think, testing this out. I think I got some footage of me using it too. Uh, we'll probably go and do some get some more footage of you all right, busting some stuff up just to see because this knife is very purpose built. It's made to split wood. This thing is basically a chisel, right? It's a wedge. It's a wedge. That's, yeah, exactly. That's what it is. It's a wedge. And um, does that, why are we doing review cutting? I don't know, but we'll see. If you want to use this knife or anything else, let's see how it performs, right? Um, it's been a beautiful day for some review cutting. I will say this morning, woke up and it was negative six degrees outside. Now it's, a, yeah, now it's a, a beautiful 40 degrees. So that's New Mexico weather for you. But let's go ahead and talk about this thing. So sheath. Here's what we've got. This kind of plastic pocket thing. Never carried it. Yeah. I, has this thing ever been on anyone's belt? No, I don't think so. <laughs> so yeah, it just sits in a bo box by the, by the stove. Let's see what the retention is. So retention's not great, but it's not bad. I mean, it survived two yeah. jiggles. <laughs> two or three. Two or three. For the clip, we just have this little loop over plastic thing. And then let's see if you can see in there, we've got like little teeth. Let's go ahead and put it on. Actually, we'll talk about the ergos and then we'll put that on my belt and do all that. So there's the, there's the handle, hard plastic. 
and it's narrower up here. You can see it gets narrower here, it gets narrow, narrower here. So you have kind of like a pinch and then you wrap your fingers around. And I gotta say, it's actually not uncomfortable. Um, this flat spot here would actually be a pretty good little, little smasher. Maybe they intended it to be that way. I don't know. Excuse me. You got a lanyard hole. It works pretty well for me ergonomically. But I can also tell that this is a handle that you're only supposed to hold and then smack, right? This is only for batoning. How's that feel to you? I mean, it's a little big for me right here, honestly. But I like it. It's pretty comfortable. And I think that would be for like peanuts or something, just saying. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty comfortable. I like it. I like it pretty good. Good deal. And the blade here has a really interesting, like, almost like a file. I don't know. We'll talk about we'll talk about all that stuff more at the table. We've got jimping for days. I always complain about knives not having enough jimping. Well, pff, there you go. Oh, There's some one, jimping. This one's fine. This one's got all the jimping. All right, let's go ahead and put this on a belt. See what this thing looks like. You know what? I think I put it on my belt one time. Did you? Well, yeah, I think so. Well, there it is. Um, I can definitely, like, if you're just walking around camp or walk around your wood pile or something, uh, yeah, this is probably going to work fine. Pull it out. Uh, they do give you a thumb ramp, which is nice. Not a, not every sheath does on that. On both sides. Yeah, that's, yeah, they do give you a thumb ramp on both sides. That's for people that have an extra thumb growing out of the side oh, of their hand. Oh, pair of hands. Got it. <laughs> but there you go. Um, let's see how, let's see if you'll stay in there through some jumping. Tilt up. Let's see here. Good enough. <laughs> Get it off of there now. And actually, I think I remember seeing Dad um, clip it to his pocket. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so just like that. So if we're just walking around, that could also work, I guess. But there we go. All right, let's go ahead and start cutting. So this blade is 420 steel, which Camillus loves to use. Nothing amazing, but this is like a $15 knife. So, you know, you got a good chunk of it, completely straight edge, and then, yeah, it's a wedge. So <laughs> let's see how it cuts cardboard. Mm. I don't know it's so bad, actually. I mean, it, it will cut. <laughs> also, when was the last time that it was sharpened, though? That's my question. Well, I sharpened it um, the other day. Mm -hmm. I just put a little bit of an edge on it, and it's sharp. Yeah. But it's just so wedgy. <laughs> That's what it's for. Yeah. So you can see there, it's sharp enough to cut through. The edge is sharp right now. I put a little sharp edge on it before, well, I guess three days ago. <laughs> Has it been used since then? Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. But, uh, yeah, definitely not the uh, sliciest geometry. All right, let's see how it does on this. I actually think it's going to do really good on the rope. We'll see here. <laughs> hmm. Ouch, I spoke too soon. All right, there we go. Okay, came out. Not too bad. And straight edges never do well at this, but let's give it a go anyways. One, two, three. Actually, I gotta hack it down. I was gonna say, actually, it, it, it cut through the rope pretty nicely. And you, you know what, you're right. Let's, let's see here. There we go. There we go. That's that. That's how you do it. Awesome. Now let's do the pool noodle. Cause a wedge is definitely the best geometry for this. Thinner. You want to go thinner? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what? That wasn't that was terrible. <laughs> okay, let's go a little thicker. So yeah, you can see the knife is sharp. Yeah. It's definitely sharp. <laughs> okay, wow, that was 
that was surprisingly not terrible. That actually kind of blew my mind. Yeah, like, I did not expect that at all. What the heck? Let me grab some of that cardboard again. This is just, I'm just <laughs> it may not be the greatest cardboard knife. But it also isn't the worst. You know what? I think I figured out how to cut with this thing. <laughs> I think is what happened. Wow. Okay, so that's actually, let's see. Great for your utility cuts. Okay, you know what? I'm not sure what I was wrong the first time with the cardboard. It's actually not doing terribly that right now. Okay, hmm. well. <laughs> there's the Camillus wedge. Uh, for what it's worth, I, I, you, you can cut stuff with it. So if you want to use this for, I mean, obviously there's no point it's a knife, so we can cut stuff, but yeah, uh, we'll definitely go and split some wood with it right now. All right, let's see if I can stick it. Hey, that's... All right, all right. If I get it in three tries, I'm going to count that as a win. Ah, dang it. Oh. Too much handle. Yay! Yay! Let's go! <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to let uh, Levi here show us. <laughs> Forget my name or something? No, I just, I've never said your name on the channel before. I'm not sure if you wanted it out no, there. No, that's fine. I'm okay, fine. so we're going to let Levi go ahead. And uh, what you going to do here? Um, first off, I'm going to make a baton. Okay. Out of this piece of wood, we're taking this off. Nice. So I'll just break that off, actually. There we go. I'm going to turn this into kindling for tonight, or never make a fire next. Let's see when that is. I'm usually sitting on the ground when I do this, so let's go. So you're telling me too, what do you like to make kindling out of? Aspen, mostly. It works really good for kindling. Really good for kindling. So there you go. Very nice. So let me ask you this: What do you prefer, using that or an a or a hatchet? Well, for kindling, I usually use this. However, if it's a piece of pine, I use my hatchet. So I usually use a hatchet on pine, but this works really good on the aspen. And so, do you like using that just inside? This isn't my inside thing. Yeah, if yeah. I'm making kindling outside, I use my hatchet though. Okay, good deal. So speaking of hatchets, this has nothing whatsoever to do with that knife right there, but. <laughs> I have this little thing that I bought a while back. It's also a Camillus. And oh, I know this thing. Yeah, yeah. I want you to to chop something with that. Okay. And then let me know what you think. One second. I do fancy a good hatchet. I I know you. I know you. I'll be honest. You and our youngest brother are. Uh, you know, I've been kind of out of the woods for a couple of years, and you guys are kind of becoming more woodsmen than uh, than I am right now. I'll tell you what, I, I do just love hatchets. They're quite fun. I appreciate them. In fact, I can't remember the last time I went wood cutting. It was probably when I was in high school. The last time we did it was um, uh, back before school started. Would have been like August? No, no, maybe it was September. I don't know. I don't know. We did some fun shooting though too. Did you guys go out there to the Tusis? No, we went out to um, high country do some stuff. Then we come back. We stopped someplace to get some wood, do some shooting, all the good stuff. Oh, man, 
These are all angled. <laughs> Grandpa's going crazy with a chainsaw, huh? I don't know. I don't know if I like this handle very much. He's hiding a saw in there. Yeah. Something. You have to push the lock on the back to release the saw. What? <laughs> okay. Now that's... I don't know if I like that very much. It makes it hard to hold the hatchet. It does make it hard to hold the hatchet. I think there's going to be a lot you don't like about this. And you broke our chopping block, so this doesn't work very well. I, I did break the chopping block. <laughs> All for a bit of fun. Now we suffer. I'm sorry. It's an accident. Yeah, this is not very easy to use. It's got really bad... Yeah, they definitely. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint right now. You're probably not going to get through a piece of wood that big. <laughs> well, I know that's easy hatchet work for most hatchets, yeah, but. Okay, then what should I use? Uh, yeah, let's find you a piece. Yeah, so yeah, just use that little piece of uh, aspen and let me know what you think. I don't know. I feel like the, the blade is too small. The blade is kind of small. Actually, that little piece worked better than I was expecting. One thing I hate about that hatchet is that the handle, the haft, comes up over the blade. Yeah. And so that creates like a stop when you chop into stuff. Yeah. It's got the really good um, wedge shape up here. But yeah. this is not a wedge. It's just, it's it's not sliding into it. It's just a block. It's just a blockage. There's no slide into it. Yeah. Like there should be on a hatchet. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And this isn't going to stand again. Well, so. I just wanted you to, to see how terrible that hatchet is. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. Alrighty. What am I liking and not liking about this knife? So this is a very purpose-built knife, right? This thing is built to split wood. And look at it. It is, it is just a wedge. That's, that's all it is. However, for that task, it does very, very well. Um, this spine up here with all this aggressive like, you know, knurling, it looks like a file back there. That makes it so that when you're hitting it with another piece of wood, you're not, you know, just hitting a single hard spot that might split the wood. You know, this is more impact absorby. Um, and yeah, it does go through wood really, really nicely. Um, and the knife itself, honestly, kind of cuts better than I would have expected. If you just had this knife out in the woods and you needed to survive, honestly, I think you could do worse, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but yeah, I mean, definitely break, building a shelter, breaking down wood, this would be great for. Um, this will cut, you know, I, I, you could get some work done with this. The ergonomics are actually not bad. This knife does fit your hand surprisingly well, which is bizarre. Also, look at this sharpening choil. That has got to be the most perfect sharpening choil I have ever seen outside of Spyderco. Now the edge of this thing is pretty wonky and it will continue to get even more wonky because this thing gets sharpened on an ax puck, you know, one of the sharpening pucks that sits by the wood stove. So it's not getting, you know, a great sharpening whenever it gets sharpened. But I mean, honestly, if you're just going to be smacking it through wood, it doesn't really need to be that sharp. I don't think so. Um, something else I like is it has a lanyard hole here so you can, you know, put wrap a lanyard on there, which would be pretty helpful for, you know, batoning through wood and things of that nature. So, yeah, um, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, also, I'm not sure if this is something I like or not, <laughs> but the blade here, focus up camera, has these kind of striations. Like, you can feel it. It's kind of... Maybe you can hear that. I wonder if that helps it pass through wood better or I'm not sure why they did that, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of an interesting blade finish. Um, let's go ahead and get on to some things that I don't like. The sheath uh, downright sucks. It's terrible. But again, this knife doesn't really get worn. It sits by the fireplace and that's just where it is. It doesn't get put on anyone's belt, so I don't think that's a big issue. So there you go. And honestly, well, the one thing I will say that's a complaint is I do wish the blade was a little bit longer. Talking to my brothers and my dad, you know, the people that use this knife the most, they wish it was a little bit longer for getting through some, you know, bigger pieces of wood maybe. And so, yeah, I can see that as a valid complaint. 
But honestly, there's not a whole else lot to complain about. This is a very odd knife because it is very, very purpose built. This thing is for splitting wood and splitting wood only. And that's whenever you get a tool that is designed to fill such a super specific niche role, oftentimes it's hard to complain about that knife because this sucks at a lot of things, but that's because it's not trying to do anything except one thing. And so what am I going to nitpick on this? Like, am I going to say, oh, I wish there was a little bit of belly so you could use this to skin a deer? Well, if I said that, it wouldn't make any sense because the people that designed this did not have that in mind. Um, the price on this thing is great. I picked this up for like 15 bucks. So I, yeah, 15 bucks for a little wood splitter. It, it, it's great. Um, do you need this? My f Again, my folks have gotten a lot of use out of this, having this in the house for making kindling um, there at the fireplace. And so if that's something that you could see being useful for you, yeah, you know, this is great. This is not going to be, you know, something you're splitting rounds with, right? But this is a pretty good little kindling maker and, you know, block splitter for the fireplace. Something to keep in the house. You don't have to, you know, have an ax around there or anything, but that's kind of going to be it. I mean, there's not a whole lot more to say. This thing is just, it's very weird. Very purpose-built, but you know what? Camillus knocked it out of the park. So good job, Camillus. You you made this thing, and it exists, and it does what it's supposed to do. So round of applause. And that's going to be it for today's video, guys. As always, if you like this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I've been Gideon, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.